guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Claire and this is my big box of favorites. So, speaking of favorites, I'm wearing my favorite Batman shirt today. Mm -hmm. I have all kinds of favorites for you today. We have a lot to talk about today, so let's start. So first of all, I'm going to show you my makeup favorites. And the first one is a mascara and it's the Sexy Pulp Ultra Volume Mascara by Yves Rocher. This is the packaging. It's very basic. Maybe a little bit of a downside, it's uh, very um, shiny and it doesn't lie in your hands so well, but that's okay because the brush is awesome. This is a tiny little brush and uh, these are very nice uh, fabric bristles. The color is really dark black. You have to apply like about two layers and it gives you awesome volume. It stays for a really long time. It doesn't give you any residue. This is one of my favorite mascaras all time. Moving on, I uh, went a bit crazy on a uh, drugstore haul this month and I bought some crazy colors. <laughs> Uh, when it comes to makeup and one of these was uh, the Contour Clubbing Waterproof uh, Eye Pencil by Bourgeois and this color is called Pink About You and it's a neon pink and I'm going to swatch this for you guys because this color is awesome it really is a neon pink look at that this is my favorite eyeshadow for the moment. It's uh, the Liquid Metal Eyeshadow by Catrice. Packaging is really basic. It's like a plastic case, but the eyeshadow is really nice and it's like wavy. That's so cool. I'm going to swatch this because I want you to see how pigmented this is. I mean, look at this. Yes, it focuses. The color can be described as a... Mm, as a cocoa kind of um, brown. It's nice and shimmery and it just... Oh, by the way, the color is called Nougat It Right. This is a really nice brown. It kind of reminds me of cocoa, of chocolate. And uh, it stays on really well. It's really pigmented, and this oh, <laughs> and this was my favorite eyeshadow for this month. And then a favorite lipstick. It's the one I'm wearing right now. It's a really awesome. I call this innocent pink, um, but it's number nine one zero by Kiko, and this is an awesome pink for spring. It's really cool. It's a fuchsia kind of pink and I'm going to swatch this to show you. This is what it looks like. It's really pale and it's uh, suited for any moment of the day basically. Maybe a downside is that it's a little bit too creamy and you're going to have to reapply this um, a few times a day. But the color really makes up for it. So that's it for my makeup favorites. Next are my beauty and care favorites. And I'm going to start with this one. A little closer. I recently... Uh, recolors my hair. And this is the coloring that I use and it's Garnier's Nutrice Creme number 10 black and I love this color because it's really natural dark black and it doesn't really have that blue shine uh, because I really hate it. It doesn't look natural <clears throat> and it really smells nice it smells like fruit and uh, flowers and when you have to sit with this in your hair for half an hour it better smell nice. It says that this one has three oils and um, also it has like this uh, tiny bottle of uh, conditioner which is really awesome. Next one is a duo and it's this cheerful duo over here. It has a smudge. This is by Yves Rocher as well and it's the Nutritive Vegetal. Um, this is the toner and this is the facial cleanser. And uh, I bought the cleanser first for my skin. 
and this is for very dry and damaged skin to repair it. I went back and I bought a toner as well because I was curious on how these two would interact with each other and my skin was so soft, so soft. Uh, it's hard to find to... <clears throat> There we go again. It's hard to find a good cleanser uh, for me because uh, a lot of times they will dry my face out and I will start to have like flakes of skin around everywhere. I really love these two because they moisturize my skin and I'm using a lot less of my um, day cream since I've started to use these so these are really good. Um, I also have a favorite deodorant this month and it's almost empty <laughs> and it's the Fa Fantasy Moment. This one? This is a um, this is a 24 hour deodorant with enchanting fresh fragrance, no white marks, skin friendly and this is true. This didn't dry my skin out at all. It didn't sting. It didn't react with my sweat. It didn't do anything except for smell really, really good. And the smell can be kind of described as like flowers, but it's like more heavier flowery scent. If you're into that kind of stuff, I would really recommend that you buy this one because it's really good. Next! Uh, I have two um, shower gels and this is the lemon verbena and this is the peach and almond and they are both from Marks and Spencer and I bought these two on my last trip to London last summer uh, but you can easily, <coughs> easily, easily, you can easily buy these online. I discovered recently that Marks & Spencer has an online shop. I really like this lemon verbena one. The scent is so spring-like and uh, this peach and almond as well. I haven't opened this one um, yet but I've opened this one and I've almost completely used it up. By the way, um, this is... Uh, I'm going to show you. There. And that sign means that these products haven't been tested on animals, which is probably a big plus as well. These are very moisturizing and they smell very well, so I like them, basically. Next is a hairspray. This is the Vital by Nivea. You can just spray this on, it will hold all day long and you can just brush it out. Uh, the only downside is this will leave just a little bit of residue in your hair but you ju you can just shake it out and it will be gone it won't make your hair greasy another small downside is um nivea does have this like um defect in their packaging that uh, spout is that what it's called i don't know the spout in their hairsprays clog up really easily uh, so when you use this, you clean this afterwards or else you're never going to be able to use this again. I almost forgot one and it's dirty. This is the L'Oreal Paris... <clears throat> this is the L'Oreal Paris uh, Studio Line Big and Hot um, like protection spray for your hair. And it says here that it's ideal for your blow dryer. I really love these sprayers like these like these Oop. because they are so handy on the contrary to where you have to like push this down so that it will come out this just this goes and it's just easy as that and I have these two empties and this one is really gross because it leaked everywhere this is the Montagne Jeunesse um, sauna mask with red clay. This is so relaxing. What you do is you make your face moist with water. With water? So you um, make your face moist with water and then you put this on and this warms up and it is so relaxing. When you just had a tough week, you had a lot of tasks like me or you had a tough job, uh, it was a really busy week, then you just put this on and it will take all your troubles away. Don't leave it on 
of... Oh, I cannot speak anymore, I wonder why this is. Don't leave this on for too long because you will have a tough job on removing this. Next one are these wipes by Corinne de Farme. And these are homeopathic wipes. And normally I'm not really a fan of homeopathic anything, but these are really great. They remove any kind of makeup, waterproof or otherwise, really easy. They smell so good. They literally smell like roses. Please throw this mask away right after you use it because it will leak on everything you love. So that was it for my beauty favorites. Next will be my books and comic favorites and I have three for you this time. I've been reading uh, two books lately. Uh, yes, two books because I've been reading this one as an audiobook but I have the actual paper version right here. I borrowed this from my boyfriend. And this one is one from my own collection and it's Bone Shaker by Cherry Priest and I've been reading this in the flesh. I'm going to talk about this one first. So this is Bone Shaker by Cherry Priest and Cherry Priest is kind of described as the queen of steampunk novels. I really love how she writes. It's not like very like pompous writing with a lot of descriptions, a lot of hard words. It's like very airy, very clear and it leaves uh, the reader things to imagine for himself, which is also really nice. What is the story about? There was a day when an inventor tried to make a machine uh, for the Russians to mine in Alaska through the ice. Something went wrong with the machine and it destroyed half of Seattle and there were all kinds of awful consequences and to some this guy was a hero but to a lot of people this guy was a criminal and they wanted to hang him but he died before he could be judged. 16 years later his daughter and his grandson meet with a writer who wants to write a biography about him uh, and they want to find uh, the machine that he made. Something went wrong, his machine blew up and so many years later um, his daughter and grandson are left in the ruins of everything he made and he is seen as a great villain but his grandson believes that he is a hero. He leaves on a quest throughout the whole city and he meets with sky pirates, there are zombies and it's really quite an adventure and his mother Briar just goes in and makes sure that he gets out alive. Then the second book is one that I've been reading as an audiobook but I've got the paper version right here and it's The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. First of all Patrick Rothfuss writes so awesomely like his descriptions and his dialogues are so natural. He just describes something and you can immediately immediately just see it in front of you. The story is about a guy named Colt and Colt is um, some sort of wizard. I'm not going to talk too much about his book because I'm really afraid that I might spoil this for you but Colt is kind of like a sort of a wizard and uh, we follow him through his life story. This is the first book of the Kingkiller Chronicles and uh, I'm almost done with this one and uh, then there are two more books to read so I'm really looking forward to that. I haven't been reading a lot of comics because I'm still reading Journey into Mystery. It's only two comics, Journey into Mystery, but it's taking me so long to read it and I don't know why, but I really like the story. It's just taking me a long while. But the next one on my list is Rat Queens. It's basically about a group of women uh, who go on fantasy adventures. If you know Dungeons and Dragons, it's basically someone's Dungeons and Dragons campaign gone wrong. <laughs> Some really nice drawings in here, like this one. I've been reading the first few pages and yeah, I'm pretty much hooked. The rest is going to have to wait until I finish Journey into Mystery. 
but <laughs> so that was it I hope you enjoyed my video if I, you have any comments requests questions whatsoever post them down below in the comment section give me a thumbs up if this video was to your liking and I will see you next time bye